So what is Aperture? I tried to show you in the last video and I'm sure I'm going to cut all that. Aperture is not inside the camera. I'll probably throw up a, a clip here, an image of what the aperture used to be in the old day. I'm still the aperture to this day, but in the old day, you used to be able to have a lens. And if you can see that hole right there, that is what we would call a fast lens. It's actually an F 1.8. Um, the aperture, the F stop, the speed, a fast lens. We're all talking about the aperture. When you hear about that, that is the speed of the lens. When you say speed, it sounds a little silly. And a matter of fact, what makes the aperture confusing is it's all counterintuitive. Everything's freaking backwards. With the others, actually, I'll take that back. With f-stop, if you increase it, you decrease the light. Same goes for the lens. If you increase your aperture, you're decreasing the amount of light that can hit the sensor. Okay? And what that means is, if you can see that lens, your close, let me get lined up here. I don't want some weird shot of my mouth. God dang it. Why is that so hard? Okay. So as you decrease, you're closing this off. And I can't show you because this the old school lenses used to be able to turn them and adjust the aperture uh, manually. Can't do that with these. These are electronic and you have to do it by controlling it through the camera. But in the real old days, it was actually a mechanical um thing that dropped in it was a mechanical you came with like a a, a, a a selection of them different aperture settings and from a very fine pinhole all the way up to the largest hole possible and so that lens would get different plates ultimately is what you dropped in there to decide how much light you wanted the film to be exposed with now so like everything i've been talking to you about the aperture yes lets in light but a lot of times we'll use the aperture to block light. But, 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 yeah, we know it affects light, but the side effect, the, the beauty of aperture, that's where you get those buttery shots, the bokeh, the shallow depth of field. You gotta, you gotta really think about this. What is depth of field? Because it's, it's probably not what you think. If you're here watching this video this long, Probably not what you think, because if you know what the hell this means, you're not going to last this long. Hope you can hear me okay. Uh, we're going to use this guy here. This thing has an amazing story that's associated with it. I'm not going to tell it on this podcast, but so you can see everything here. So right now, our focal point, our focal point is this little doll. Okay, so that's what we're focused on. And if you notice, we are at f 1.8 f 1.8 what does that mean that means that is actually this lens will go even lower it'll go even lower to f 1.4 which gives me an even shallower depth of field but when i say shallow i am referring to the distance before and after the focal point so for instance if this microphone was the focal point the lower i go with that number the shallower my depth of field is going to be before and after the focal point. Let's say it's an eyeball, okay, and I shoot at f1.4 with an 85 millimeter. That might not mean much to you, but an 85 is a really good tight lens for capturing, you know, headshots and just seductive and, you know, because you kind of shoot within eight feet with that thing. You know, you're, I'm usually pretty close when I'm shooting with an 85 because I'm trying to isolate someone's face. And by isolating that eyeball is what I'm really trying to shoot, the eye that's closest to them. When I shoot that, right, I only want you to be focused on that eyeball. And then from there, you can start to explore the image. But the first thing I want you to see is that eyeball that's closest to the camera. Now, if I'm close enough to my subject and I shoot that at f1.4, her eyeball, this eyeball will be in focus and this one will not. That is how shallow, so it's the distance from the focal point. I can promise you this, the ear is not in focus. So how would I, let's say I don't want it to be that, oh, could you imagine everything before your subject or everything after? Imagine it's a group of people. Would you want to do that? Would you want to shoot your aperture at f1.4? Probably not, because anybody behind her or him 
or in front of them or behind them is going to be out of focus. So if I was shooting a crowd of people, and let's say depth wise, let's say it was five people deep, I'd shoot at a higher aperture, f stop. I might use the same words to refer to the lens, but I would probably shoot at a much higher one, f 5.6, f 8, f 11. It depends. If it's a super bright day, what can I use the aperture for? Not only depth of field, I can decrease the amount of exposure so it's overcast, it's a really bright day. I would crank up my aperture, close that lens off that I showed you, and allow in a minimal amount of light, and then I can say, okay, I can get all six of these people in focus at f11. I mean, shoot, everything's going to be in focus at f11. I don't even know how high these will go. f22? Let me see this one. f22 on this lens. So that means... That your depth of field from a 1.4, imagine this. I'm going to show you. hope this makes sense. This is before, one is before and one is after the camera. So F1.4, F1.8, F2. All these really low numbers are going to give you a shallow depth of field. So if this mic was your focal point at F1.4, your depth of field is going to be a fraction of an inch. Now... The further I get my focal point from that lens, the more I'm going to increase my depth of field. So this is where it's going to trick you. This is where it's going to get, this is where you're going to make a lot of mistakes, which is awesome. This is where you're going to get to play with the camera and you realize, oh shit, the closer I get to my subject, the shallower my depth of field is going to be, which means I need to crank my f-stop up a little bit. It's too shallow too shallow. Nothing's in focus. I mean, her eyelashes are out of focus. I mean, I'm telling you, you get it so low and so close to your subject. It is almost impossible. To, the bridge of her nose, I say her, I shoot a lot of females. I shoot a lot. That sounds terrible. Can you say that these days? I've shot a lot of females. It don't matter. Males too. But I'm always focused on the eye. And you can get so shallow that everything, the, the whole image, her whole face, everything's out of focus. And if that's what you're going for, that's great. I kind of like that. But if you get too close, yeah, your shot, your depth of field is changing dramatically. It's it's decreasing. But as you push your subject, or let's say you be the camera, you get further away from your subject, you're going to increase the depth from your focal point behind it and in forward and in front of it. So that's that. That's that. That goes all the way up to the point that. You know, at, 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 once you get to the point of infinity, which your every lens has a distance, your your focal distance. That's another thing I'm not really going to go into. But you know, when you hit the autofocus, um, it'll set at how many feet you are from your subject. So if you're five feet, it'll if you look, it'll say, "Oh, I'm right at five feet." Or you can do it manually. You can manually adjust your lens. Um, but yeah, after you get past on this particular lens, every lens is different. It all depends on the lens. Remember, everything we're talking about now, aperture is all 100% in the lens. Now, new cameras, it's controlled by the camera, but all that control is being done electronically through the camera manipulating it. Don't know if that made any sense. I want to give you some examples. So we'll do an overhead shot. So we're going to keep him in focus and watch, just watch him for a second. Watch him stay in focus. Because my camera is set to autofocus, okay? So I'm not having to do this. It's live. It's a video. So yeah, he stayed in focus. So he is in focus right there. That's as close as I can get. But if you look, look at everything else. It's gone. Everything else is gone. Because the closer I get to the camera, look at my mic. It's in focus because they're, they're the same distance. This word is the same distance from the camera that my focal point is. But watch as I start to take my focal point away. Watch this. What is happening? That's my depth of field. My depth, the distance from the camera and this word and the camera and my focal point as I increase the distance, my depth is getting shallower and shallower and shallower. You can see the camera starts, everything's coming in focus. Look at my camera down here. Uh oh, sorry. As the further I get this away, the more blurry this is all going to be. 
This camera's out of focus, in focus, out of focus, in focus. Does that make sense? Does that make any sense at all? The depth, the depth, the depth is the distance from the focal point. And that means the distance behind it and the distance in front of it. Now, let's play with this. Let's increase this f 1.8. I'm going to I'm going to increase it and you're going to see what's going to happen. Sorry if the camera shakes a little bit. I went to f4. I went to f4. Did you see that? f4. That wasn't a big jump and the image is black. It's unusable. So why would I have gone to f4? Well, that damn shot was too shallow. It was shallow. Nothing before or after it was in focus. I can't live with that. I mean, there, there's too many things in this shot. It's, this has nothing to do with the width. This has everything to do with the distance from the camera. So why would I do that? Like I said, I want more in front of the subject and more behind the subject to be in focus. Well, I have to make a sacrifice. I have to increase my aperture, which caused us to be too damn dark. How do I fix it? How do I fix it? You have two choices. An easy one. ISO. So we could easily go to the ISO. ISO's here. That's ISO 800. So what I'm looking at is this EV exposure right here. Right there would mean it's probably the best exposure. So I could keep increasing that, but 10,000, my God, that's 10,000. I mean, this camera can handle it, no problem, but most cameras can't go to 10,000 without introducing grain. The higher quality camera you get, honestly, I, I never shoot at 10,000. I'm just giving you an example. Because what I would do is, is if I needed something like that, I would introduce more light. I would bring in artificial light, like this room is full of artificial light. That's all I would do to keep from having to sacrifice image quality and having to keep my ISO from going so high. Now, if I don't have a choice, I'm cranking a damn ISO up. I'm just, boom, I don't even think about it because the shot is all that matters to me. But if I have time to plan, I got a little time, I can get a piece of reflective, I don't give a shit, something like this. You know how many times I've filled in someone's neck? See that shadow under my neck? I filled in someone's neck. Shit, I can't even show you this. See that shadow? How many times I've done that just with a piece of white paper, you know, something just to, to fill in a shadow? You can use all kinds of things. It doesn't matter. You're just trying to eliminate harsh shadows most of the time. So um, you'll do what you have to do to get the shot because in the end, that's all that matters. There's film grain correction stuff, but ultimately you kind of want to get it right. Uh, but in the end, who gives a shit? As long as you get a good image, you'll do what you got to do to get it. But the more you go out and practice these things, the less you have to think about it. it. It's just something you know. It's just instinctive. You don't think. These are not. If, let me tell you. If you're thinking about, oh, do I adjust the shutter speed or the aperture? Or the, huh? No, if you're thinking these things, then you, you're, you, they're not programmed. They're not a part of who you are. It, it, it's not something you think about which comes with practice, which comes with the mistakes. And going out there and making these mistakes is going to give you the opportunity to burn this stuff. And not only that, it's not only just memorizing these things. You're going to create your own art. You're going to create your own style by emulating. Don't try to simulate or replicate someone's work. Emulate, right? Emulate until you innovate. Go out there and try to... Say, oh, that's a cool shot. I wonder how they got that. Let me go out there and try that. And you think about it before you go, and you just go practice that. And then from that process of stumbling through trying to emulate someone else's art, when I say emulate, I'm not saying you're going to have to go out there and get the same exact shot. You're going out there inspired by a shot, you know, the sunset shot, golden hour, a river, a landscape, birds, whatever, people, headshots, whatever. But through the process of trying to emulate someone else's work that you admire, you're going to stumble in through mistakes and say, oh, shit, I found something. And it's, once you find it and you get back to your computer, because you're not really going to know. Sometimes you kind of know. Sometimes, Most of the time I'll say this. You'll think you have the shot. It looks so good on that teeny tiny screen. You get back and you're like, shit. 
the damn eyeballs are out of focus or whatever it is. It's very discouraging. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing you can do about something being out of focus. Yes, there are cameras now that have technology that take like multiple shots that adjust the aperture to give you a little bit slightly different depth. I don't know where that technology has gone, but it's getting there. But for the most part, you kind of want to nail it. What else do we want to talk about? What else do we want to talk about? I'm getting hungry. It's getting to be another long-ass video. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy this video. Because I can't stress to you enough that none of this matters. None of the shit that I'm saying matters about ISO and stress. None of it matters. I, I just want to inspire you to go out and make a shit ton of mistakes. Because that's where the magic happens. That's where you become your own artist. Because art is not created like most people think. The word create, to create. We, I mean, we're, we idolize that word so much because it's to be godlike. God creates, right? So we love creative people. But the truth is, I think humans don't do a very good job at creating. We do an incredible job at discovering, finding, and um, I can say this, if we were really good at creating, would we have bad songs? I, I mean, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of somebody that young, who, um, I mean, you can name any artist, we'll talk about music, but any artist you could ever think of has thousands of shitty songs. They had a shitty voice, they had a shitty style songwriters or terrible if the, if we were creative then none of it would have wound up in the garbage now we have to discover it through mistakes we have to discover these things these talents these gifts this art we have to discover them through the process of making mistakes because everything else is a reflection in which already exists if you take a cool photo the first time you go out and you just literally copied someone else's work. You copied their settings. You, you literally copied the image. That's not creating anything. You didn't create nothing. You 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 replicated it. You, you it, it's a fraud. But if you're inspired by someone's work and you go out and emulate their work, well, then from the process of emulation, you innovate and you find something that now belongs to you and that other people hopefully will want to emulate that. And that's it. That's all art is. That's all songwriting, um, photography. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're into, if it if it pushes you out of your comfort zone and, and you spend time and you're obsessed with it and passionate. That's the thing. I think people give up because they think, oh, I'm not gifted. Well, bitch, I ain't gifted at nothing. My only gift is obsession. That is it. I am not talented in anything else. Nothing. I am not. I am not gifted at anything other than being obsessed, laying awake. I've been up since two o'clock this morning, just obsessed over different things that I'm working on. Is that a gift? Maybe that's my gift. Obsession. I'm not a great photographer. I'm a terrible photographer, but I've gotten lucky and um, I've gotten some pretty cool shots and I've made some pretty cool videos and I've made a really good living off of it. And it was literally 100% from going out, goofing off, and not trying to make money off of it. My God. If you are coming here because you want to make money off of your art, go somewhere else because this is not the video for you. You're going to it for the wrong reasons, and you will never make money and be happy. I'm not going to say you won't make money. You can make money. You can go into this business with the intentions of making money. But I cannot guarantee you. Matter of fact, I would do quite the opposite. I could almost 100% guarantee you that if you're going into any field with the intentions of being creative and making money, you will be miserable. Because this career, if you turn it into a career, which I hope you don't, the highs are high and the lows are low. And I don't care if you're talking about photography, painting, singing, doesn't matter. 
if you can just find joy in it, doing it for fun, and, and I'm not trying to say don't make money, but don't do it with the intentions of making money. If people want to pay you, then great. But resist. Resist. Do it because you want to do it. Not because you need to fucking pay the rent. Well. Sorry that went down that road. No, I'm not fucking sorry. Look. I'm a nobody. I'm just a curious dude. But I can tell you this. There's not an artist. I don't care how high they get. They could be at the top. Most famous of famous. And if they were... If any of them were capable of being honest, they would tell you that I'm telling you the truth. Art is found. It's discovered. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Now, people with big egos and very narcissistic, they wouldn't, they don't want to tell you that it was, they found it, it was an accident. Because they almost feel like they're not worthy. They, they, they almost, I don't know if they just enjoy being idolized, but if they were being honest, and the, the more confident an artist gets, the more honest they get, and they say, hey man, that was just an accident. Old school artist, old school, whatever. When I say fucking artist, I'm talking about anybody that has created something. I hate saying the word create, discovered something. The older they get and the more confident they get, the more honest they get. And they'll be like, hey man, I, I don't know, it's just luck. And it is, it is. And But I love luck. Luck is nothing more. I hope you've heard this before. I think the first time I ever heard it was Casey Neistat said, uh, luck is where preparation intersects or meets opportunity. And that is, it's true. And I can tell you this, opportunities will never come. Because you'll never see them until you're prepared. So you got to be prepared first. And then when you're prepared, the opportunity will at some point, and you'll be like, oh, shit, I found something. I got something. And it's magical. It's, 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 a, it's amazing. I hope that, uh, I hope this was a good video. I apologize for it being so long. This, this is going on for 26 minutes. So with that, have a wonderful night. If you want to know more, maybe I could go into a little more depth and, I don't know. We can figure something out. If you want more information, let me know. If you want more something more specific. Excuse me. If you want something more specific, I know this is kind of random. Have a great night.